Hi everyone and welcome to this my video on transition matrices using recursion. My name is Darren from MathsGuru, absolutely MathsGuru, never heard of it, you will do soon. It's there, mafsguru.com. Head over all the videos, everything I am writing on, the downloadable lesson notes, time codes, VCAR exam questions are all there for you to download or have a look at at the very least and hopefully you'll find it useful. Now what am I going to work with? Well normally I'd hit into lesson objectives but I'm pretty sure you guys can pause the video and have a read over those. It builds on the previous videos for this section. Now let's recap what we have been working on. In the past two lessons, we've looked at transition diagrams and matrices, and I opened a car hire company in Bendigo and Colac, those two wonderful places in Victoria, okay? And we came up with the idea that, well, when you hire cars, while many of them will undoubtedly be returned to the place they were hired from, which is fairly normal, not all of them will. So Bendigo, to Colac, 20% of the cars that are hired in Bendigo will be returned to Colac at the end of a week, all right? So week to week, and this is what this diagram is dealing with, week to week. And we could do this by using a transition matrix. And we had to make sure that we're very careful that the columns were our start and the rows were our end, which is slightly different with what we've been dealing with before. But I've got a bit of a problem because at the moment, this transition diagram only seems to give me one week, doesn't it? I mean, I know that at the end of the first week, 20% of the cars will go from Bendigo to Colac. 10% uh, of the cars that started in Colac will go to Bendigo. 80% will rotate and 90% uh, will rotate there. But that's only one week. I'm hoping to be in business slightly longer than one week. So the question is, how would I know what percentage of cars there were week to week to week to week? Hmm, well there must be a way, mustn't there? Of course there is. And we go back to this recurrence relations again. I'm so sorry guys, just when you thought financial maths was finished, oh, it comes back again. And do you remember with the finance? We had this general idea of a recurrence relation. Oh, yes, they're back. Where V0 stood for our principal amount. If you remember, for our financial amounts, V0 was how much we started with. And then we could work out week to week to week, which was Vn plus 1, was some multiplier, this R value, times V of N, which would be my current state. And then we had this plus or minus value where we could have paid into our bank account or paid out. Now, if you don't remember that type of stuff, the good news is you can head over to mathsguru.com and sign up for free and have a look at all that stuff as well. Now, while you're at it, and a bit of a break if you would, can you do me a massive favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel? I know, incredibly needy, ridiculous really, but very few people find my content. And at the end of the day, when I get three or four subscribers at, uh, on YouTube, I do get a little bit uh, crazy. I know that sounds mad really, but it means the world to me. So if you can click the little subscribe button, or just head over to YouTube as Maths Guru and uh, subscribe. I would be deeply, deeply grateful. Thank you so much. Now, let's go back to this. How is this actually going to apply to financial maths? Uh, sorry, no, to uh, matrices. Well, we need an initial amount. I'm going to open my car hire company with a certain number of cars, yes? So what would we call that? Well, for some reason, we call that S0. Why S? Ah, well, S stands for state. So we think of um, real world as having states, yes? Um, so S0 would be my initial state. The thing that starts my diagram, my starts my system, starts my real world thing. Then we would go to S of N, which is my current state, S of N plus one, which would be my next state, and so it goes on. So we're now gonna start using the same type of nomenclature, but we're going to know how F0 is my initial state. He says, I'm writing that. Now, how do you go from state to state to state? How do I go from my initial state to the end of week one? Or from the end of week one to the end of week two? And so it goes on. Well, that's where we multiply by my transition matrix. So we would now say that S of N plus one is equal to my transition matrix times my previous state. Now, at the moment, we are not going to be worried about plus or minus at this moment in time. That will come a little bit later on. But the general idea now is we're going to be looking at the idea of having an initial state and state to state to state. Now, again, letters here, really, really important. Just realize that we're going to have S0 rather than V0 and T. 
instead of um, R, and, and then pretty much is the same idea. Right, let's have a look. Opening day, yay, I've opened my uh, hire business in Bendigo, and I've basically found enough money to hire 90 cars. Yes, I didn't steal them, I promise. There were 90 cars that I could afford to buy. They're not particularly great, but they are 90 cars, nonetheless. Right, uh, 50 of them are going to put in low, uh, Bendigo, and 40 of them are gonna end up in Colac. Is that okay? Yes, right, so how would we model that in a matrix? Well, here we go. We would say that S0, therefore, is 40, 50. Now, again, as I say here, the order of this is gonna be really, really important. Notice in my state matrix, we've got B followed by C. So I would now have to do the same here, starting from top to bottom. So in that situation, that now stands for the cards in Bendigo, and that stands for the card in Colac. And getting these in order is, again, so important, right? From our research and from what we've done so far, we know that we now have our T, our transition matrix, and we're pretty much set to go. We can now use that information to work out, well, all right, we know what we're starting with. We know that this is going to tell us week to week where our cars are going to end up. Let's multiply them together and find out how many cars we're going to have in each of my locations at the end of week one. How do we do that? Using our CAS calculator. Woo! I'm in the money. Well, actually, this shows me nothing about money, to be perfectly honest with you, but it's going to tell me where my cars are. So... Hopefully you are aware of how to put transition matrices or in fact matrices into the memory in your CAS calculator. What you can see here is I've used a screenshot for the TI Inspire. Um, I'm fairly sure it's fairly similar for the uh, Classio cast pad. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to just follow along. So what I've done is I've stored T as my transition matrix. And again, when you put these things in, always make sure that you put them in correctly. A number of times I've done them. In fact, I've got to re-record the whole Leslie matrices video because I put a silly value in. I didn't look and uh, it made the whole video wrong. That's okay. And then what I've done here is I've put that into S0. And you'll notice that for the TI Inspire, you can actually put S0 as a matrix. Um, and then I've simply said, right, well, can you now do T times S0? That's this calculation here to get to S1. I'm gonna take my T and multiply, uh, multiply it by S0. To get to my next week, take my transition matrix, multiply it by my current week. So there we go, put that into my calculator. And yay, at the end of the first week, we now know that my value of S1 is going to be 44 and 46. What does that mean in real world? Well, there is my Bendigo, there is my Colac. 44 cars in Bendigo, 46 cars in Colac, yay. Really yay? Well, I want to make sure that they still add up. I started with 90 cars. Am I still got 90 cars? I have. And again, be careful because I'm going to about to show you where you can uh, trip up on this one. But 44 and 46. Yes. Oh, interesting. So I've got six more cars in Colac. Yeah. And six less cars in Bendigo. Hmm. Well, that's okay. I'm sure we're fine. But that's my week one. Yeah. How would I now go to week two? Well, pretty much like we did in financial maths, we take the matrix that we now have. So in this situation, if I want to get to S2, I do my transition matrix times S1. So there's my S1, 44, 46. Yeah, it's shown here on my calculator. And again, all I can do now is because I don't want to keep typing my transition matrix in, I can just say, well, do T times that matrix there. And probably when I put that into my calculator, I probably just use the uh, keyword ANS and it's just transferred it for me. Oh, we've got a bit of a problem. Yeah? Well, my calculator doesn't realize we're dealing with whole numbers of cars. Why should it? It's not very clever. And what it's told me is now I've got 39.8 cars in Bendigo and 50.2 cars in Cola. Well, that doesn't work. What? Has somebody returned a car without a tire? Is that sort of where my 39.8 cars from, comes from? A tire's fallen off and they've just gone, oh, I'm so sorry, your cars are so rubbish, it lost a tire. Uh, no, your calculator is basically doing what it does. It does the math for you. You have to interpret this. So what have we got? 39.8, so we would say really we've got 40 cars. So if I was gonna write this down as an answer, I would say that S2 therefore is equal to 40, I've rounded that one up, so I'd have to round the next one down, and 50. Well, that's okay. Again, as a check, remember, I always do my check to make sure that they add together. Well, 40 plus 50 does equal 90. Yay, the world goes crazy. Um, hold on, I've now lost 10 cars from Bendigo. I started with 50 cars, didn't I? And 40, 
and it's now gone 40 and 50. It's swapped. I've lost 10 cars here. If this keeps going, I'm going to have no cars in Bendigo after a while. And basically, that's quite important to us. We want to know what's going to happen to all of my cars or whatever I'm dealing with at some point in the future. Well, let's have a look at week three then and see whether it changes.